Okay, so we now have a lot of different things that we can do if we're given an electric field, okay? So we can, for example, uh, just test whether or not it is a field, right? So we're given a field equation. Uh, this equation says, okay, you know, we have a vector field. Um, at any given point we've de in space, we've defined a vector, right? And we say, could this be an electric field? Um, so, well, we can take the curl of E. If it's zero, then it's a possible electric field. Um, and if it is a possible electric field, then we can ask some other questions, like um, where, do, where are its charges, right? Um, what is the potential for this field? Um, and we can do that, and we can um, use that however we want to use them later on. So uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to do an example uh, just about that. So if I'm given a um, perspective field, so I'm not sure if this field, um, let's call it G of X. Uh, I'm not sure whether or not this field is going to be a um, real electric field or if it's just something that uh, I get to, get to play with yet. But, you know, if I have that field, then I can um, test it, right? So I've got, I've got my field, my perspective field. Um, it has, you know, it's linear in each direction uh, with respect to its um, component in that direction. This is actually just the radius ve vector r. Um, and we're multiplying it by some scaling fact, some scale factor e naught, so if some field e naught. Um, that'll give us the correct units. Um, as long as we divide by r, which is a, a scaling factor, so me meters divided by meters, we have something in volts per meter there, so everything's nice. Um, and that's the reason why you keep seeing in my examples these um, r's showing up, is just so that I can make sure that this, the units of this guy are the units for that guy. So, well, if we're using this and it's, it's some sort of field, right, um, let's just take a peek at what it looks like. Well, uh, we're saying that E looks like this. So it just keeps on getting larger and larger and larger on to infinity in any direction you decide to go. So this is the magnitude of E. Um, very nice. I, I think we can we can live with that. That's that's all right in my in my book. Um, actually, you might remember seeing it before. Um, I, I hope you do. If not, then we'll find out that it's the exact same thing that we've seen before later on. Um, find. Um, well, first we want to see if see if this is a um, possible field. Okay, uh, then we want to find the charge density, if it is. Now there's really no um, suspense, right? It is going to end up being an electric field. I've already told you enough to say that. And you know, um, you can look at the length of this video when it's done and you'll be really, really sure that I didn't just take the curl and be done with it, right? It's not going to be a five minute video. Um, then we're going to ask ourselves what is the potential. Mm. And I don't know what we're going to call it. We'll call it phi. Phi is a good uh, phi is a good potential, and um, that's what we have. So our concept is properties of the electric field. And there are all sorts of equations that we're going to use. I'll just use them as we go. Um, that's really not something that we do in this class. It's something that I do I do in the um, in the physics three class. So uh, I won't I won't bother. 
Um, so let's see, what do we want to do? Well, this is one of these things just like just like we've had before where things are um, pretty direct, right? Well, we just want to find the curl of E and and that will that will tell us about this. We find the curl of E and then we ask ourselves is it zero? And if it is, huh, we got a field. All right. So three. Um, we apply Gauss's law to find find the charge. That'll be nice. That'll be simple. That that'll keep us happy. Um, and then we've got four. Um, we want to find phi along the symmetry line. Um, and we might do some something later. I, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to uh, going to do this. I think what I'll probably have to do is I'll have to uncondition. And if we, if I do, then I'll show I'll show you what I just wrote. <laughs> so um, I think I'll, when I find the um, potential, I'll end up doing something very specific that I can generalize. Let's see. But we still want to just see if this thing is a field before we decide all of those interesting interesting things to do when we find the potential. So then we, what we care about is del cross e, right? And so we have x hat d d x plus y hat d d y plus z hat d d z. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. That was rude. Um, then we have e naught over r times x hat x plus y hat y plus z hat z. Oh, this is going to be horrible. All right. So. Now we can um, do this um, product. Uh, so this E naught over R, it's a constant, so it can go all the way out in front and we don't have to worry about it. So we'll do that so we have it in a um, nice manageable spot. Uh, now we get to take the um, curl of the derivatives and the radius vector. So. Um, this isn't. This is probably something we've already done, but uh, let's go ahead and do it again. Um, so we have the curl is x d d y um, of z minus d d z of y plus y d d. Um, z of x minus d d x of z plus z d d x of y minus d d y of x and you'll notice that for each one of these derivatives we have something that's um, independent of the um, coordinate that we're taking the derivative with respect with, that means they're all equal to zero. And so is that zero? Yes. So we have a field. Simple. Simple as that. We, that's exactly what we do in this last, um, this last section. But now we can go ahead and um, apply Gauss's law and find um, the charge density. So we know what we've got is a field, so we can actually do this and get something meaningful. If it's not a field, then what we, we can get a number, possibly, we can get a number. That number is not meaningful, right? It's not really the charge because, you know, we don't have the kind of function, the kind of field that describes an electric field. So what does it matter what the charges of that field would be if it wouldn't be a field in the first place? So this takes the divergence. 
So x hat ddx plus y hat ddy plus z hat ddz. Oh, that's so amazing, right? Um, and then we have e naught over r again with x x hat plus y y hat plus z z hat. So we're not looking at anything completely um, difficult now. This this particular thing I do know what we did because we just did it in class today. Um, so anyways, we can pull out the e naught over r, right? Epsilon naught e naught over r. Uh, the x components, so we have dx dx plus dy dy plus dz dz. So that's one, one, and one. So our um, charge distribution ends up being epsilon three epsilon naught e naught over r, which is a uniform charge distribution. So this is uniform. Okay. So we just have a uniform um, charge distribution in all of space, and that's what gives us this um, this field. Are you asking yourself how that can be it? You should be. All right, so let's find um, phi along a line of symmetry. Let's just say this z-axis, right? So if we were to say I'm just uh, somewhere on this z-axis, right, some point z, and I can choose where I want to um, use as my reference point. I, you know, sometimes we use um, infinity. I don't want to use infinity um, because infinity is a big number. So I'm going to use zero instead. And and so we have this. Um, we have e dot d s, right? But d s in this case is let's say we start way up here at. Um, in, you know, infinity z, or we start at zero and we go to z, it's in the z hat direction. Um, if we do that, we are going in the z hat direction, and that then we have dz. So this is our um, path element. So what do we do with that? Um, I guess we just are stuck, you know, taking the derivative. Or, or taking the um, integral. So e dot z is just um, z e naught r, right? So we have um, integral from 0 to z, uh, e naught z over r, right? And um, we can do that dz, right? Um, e naught r, that's a constant, and uh, the integral of z dz is one half um, z squared, so we have e naught z squared over 2r. And that's our phi. Now, now we did that along the z axis, right? So if I, um, I started here and came, came up here, this is what we get. But we get pretty much the same number for phi if we went any old direction, right? Because this, this guy is a, um, a radial asymmetric function. So um, we can do this unconditioned part, which is just to say we're looking at phi of r, and that phi of r is going to be um, minus epsilon naught r squared over 2 big R. So that, that's all we need for that um, problem. A couple of very straightforward applications of stuff, and we're done. That's all we need to do for the, uh, for the chapter. Um, next, the next chapter is going to be something to do with capacitors. Capacitors, images, oh, we're going to do image charges. You'll love image charges. Image charges are the best. I, I know you'll love them. So uh, get ready for that. And um, I'll see you in class.